Hello, welcome back to Blender CC Live Noding. In this episode, I want to share with you this note setup of geometry nodes in Blender 3.0 that's using uh, geometry proximity. All right, uh, before watching this, you might wa want to watch this uh, tutorial by Bradley Animations on geometry proximity. This one is a pretty good. I watched this one one time, but uh, I still not 100% understand. This note is apparently uh, really powerful, but slightly tricky to understand um, unless you know and get used uh, to this kind of field working with the uh, proximity um, especially this position and source position is something that I'm still not 100% but anyway uh, this is the setup that I made and this might be useful <clears throat> for you to play around with so there's a couple of there are two different example Okay, yeah. The first one is this one it's where where this grid is being displaced by using the proximity and the distance of points into uh, the surface of this grid. Alright, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. So we I started with a, a grid as you can see here this is the the main node and then I'm setting the position using something coming in and I'm, I'm offsetting the grid um, what's influencing the grid however is this geometry proximity into something the target so the target is this text object that's being generated from this you might have seen similar tutorial somewhere um, in the past maybe from from James Redmon or like red gem red gem 9 um, yeah anyway so we have this text right string and I resemble the text into points in this case and then I use curve <coughs> curve to mesh realize instance and there's this transform node but geometry proximity is generating the distance from this text to the surface of the grid play around with this uh, I think it's you can use edges or faces depending on the geometry if you want to use the surface maybe um, you can use the face maybe this is what you want so it's going to be like a kind of like a mat and anyway this is like generating distance and then from this value you can use uh, things like modulo multiply and map range so this is usually the common things that you you might want to use with this uh, distance field with modulo you get this effects you can skip oops you can skip the modulo if you mute this you get just this result multiply is making things more like uh, contrasty modulo will repeat and okay I'm currently using smoother step by default is actually set to linear I think smoother step will give nice result and then you can play around with this clamping of value and range mapping Notice here the, uh, the value from 0 to from original minimum and maximum. So the distance from. Let me draw something. Oh, that's funny, I cannot draw. The distance from one object to another needs to be inverted so we can control the value and use it for whatever we are creating. In this case, I'm using the original position of the grid and then add it together with this value coming from 
geometry proximity that has been modified so these three nodes responsible you can you can actually play around with other value like round or ceiling maybe wrap try all of this see what you can come up with but it's becoming like a field value some kind of field that you cannot see with your eyes but you can see the result okay so it's displacing this object play around with this offset I don't know anyway watch this video first and you might understand my video a little bit better but my one is more like an example it's like a finished product you can replace this grid with other objects the nice thing about uh, the way I think of this uh, geometry proximity is like a little bit like dynamic paint brush and canvas so the brush is this text object um, it could be it could also be like a, something like mesh circle for example uh, let me try I think I made a mistake or I need to zero out something okay because this is a mesh circle so it's just a circular object I'm using this object and then measuring the distance from this object into the grid using geometry proximity this is the result that I get I can play around with this so you can actually have like an actual face or you just simply use the edge kind of neat right this is uh, something to play around with you can also use star cannot see anything might need to use transform or this star is probably a circle uh, it's, a, it's a curve so you need to turn it into mesh object quite nice actually yeah and yeah we get the distance from this object we can play around with this distance scale so it's a, because this is like a field field node um, so there's some kind of field that you cannot see with your eyes but we can use the value uh, with modulo multiplier play around with this step remapping and just combine it into combine it back into a vector and then we use it just to disturb to displace this object in my other example okay this is like displacing the grid in the other example here I'm using it to generate points which is uh, also pretty interesting so if you use uh, if we go back to the text okay I, I might need to just give it a color this is the nodes that's responsible Um, back to our text object so this is our modulo so we can see like uh, this is look, looking like sands <clears throat> We can use this to generate some instance objects pretty easily. Like if you use cylinder, just instance on points. So this is the points coming in. This is the instance object. Uh, you can see it's really fast. So we have like a, like a mat, you know, like welcome, or you know, you can write in like land. This is a, 
like a floor mat outside your door. Uh, feel curve distribute face on instant. Okay. Center it, and so it's becoming like a fur, some kind of fur. You can use random value on the scale. Controlling some random randomizations. Okay, maybe I need to put the cylinder on the floor. But anyway, you get you get the idea. So yeah, you can do a lot of things with this. So this node is responsible. This is the grid that's coming in. I'm using a simple grid, but you can replace this with any other objects, any 3D objects. And whatever that distance these objects from our text object or from our circle or stars, so this is like all the all the options that's available. You can create this kind of design. Oops, look at that. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's looking like alien circle. Okay, so hopefully this is useful. Play around with this and make modification as you need. Again, I recommend you to watch this one. I still need to watch this again until I understand exactly what's going on. Because with, uh, uh, I think Bradley made uh, some kind of notes that makes this more useful. Could be a little bit uh, trickier, but he here's my example. So you can understand this setup a little bit better. Um, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.